All right, testing one, two, three. So if you're getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, if you can uh, go over to the fence, we'll try and get a single file line here. As we've got a little bit of a traffic jam taking place here in the main entry and exit. So Frank Brewer, Lester Hankins, and Brian Crockett, you are being paged to report to the flag stand. Well, our race fans, uh, the wait is finally over, and to conduct uh, the induction of the class of 2016 in the Cottage Grove Speedway Wall of Fame, track historian Denny Dethridge. Okay, thanks, Ben. Welcome, everybody, to Historical Night at the Races, and uh, got to thank some of my friends for helping put this on. Uh, Heather and uh, the crew down here at the track, and uh, especially someone uh, did something very special. Everybody that's enjoyed your hand fans, give a big round of applause to Carrie from Dodd's Trophy Shop. He's done all kinds of awesome work for us to make this happen tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank my wife and uh, Tammy and my grandkids and Ben and everybody in my family for helping and uh, I'd like to thank all of you guys for showing up and caring about the racetrack. So first we're going to induct Kitty. Um, so Kitty Tobin, Tobin Crow family come on down. Okay. All right. So Kitty was one of our uh, gals that lined up the cars in the pits and uh, for time trials, for, uh, for all the races and everything. And uh, I don't, uh, she came here from Eugene Speedway and I know one thing for sure, you didn't mess with Kitty. So here's her family to give a little talk about her. sister kind of adopted through the family. I lived with her for many years. Uh, I got my first job at the track for Kitty as a tech person. Thanks to Heather, uh, I 
I worked with Heather and Kitty at Salem Indoor. Kitty was a very outgoing person when it came to uh, racing, especially with the kids. She was Mau Mau to a lot of the kids out here at the track, from Cottage Grove all the way up to Salem. She is very, very missed. Seems like we get over one hurdle and she's accepted into another category of awesomeness. I don't know how to explain it, but uh, we thank you guys for conducting her into this. It is very humbling. Thank you. Miss Kitty, yeah. Okay, so Doug Calvin. Okay, this is, uh, this is one of our hard top racers, uh, Doug Townsend. He uh, drove the worm wagon for uh, Oregon Nightcrawler Company, a very popular a winning driver. And here's his brother, Dennis, to say a few words about him. Well, thank you, everyone. I'm sure my brother has been real happy for this time that you are all put together for the best of all of us. He had a lot of fun. He spent a lot of time working on them and wrecking them and working on them some more. But uh, it's been a good, good time and this is a good thing for young people to get into. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our next guy was a hardtop champion in 1971. Uh, he was, uh, somebody told me that the chassis under that white car out back was his old car. Uh-huh, so uh, like I said, he, uh, he did what it took to win races and win the championship, and uh, that takes tremendous dedication. Dennis Sears. This guy uh, raced, I think he raced jalopies in the mid-60s and then maybe stock cars, modifieds, he raced sportsmen, modifieds, he, I think he competed here at age 70. Oh, pretty close. Yeah, so he's still out here at 82 years old selling parts and working on cars and Mentoring the guys, that's a very important thing, uh, telling the new guys what to do to be fast and be successful. Frank Brewer. Thank you. Makes you pretty proud to get this. When I started here was Archie Redonsky. I watched most of these guys that's driving now in dirty diapers running around, including the Ashleys. So, I can tell stories on an awful lot of them, but I won't do that. <laughs> but I, I'd like to say this, though. Uh, since Archie Gudonski and other promoters have gone through here, Heather has just done such a good job. Great job for all of you people. She's promoting all the time. So, I think we ought to give Heather a great big hand for keeping this track going. 
Thank you, everybody. All right, congratulations, Frank. Uh, our, our next guy, uh, well, the first time I saw him, he, uh, he came up here to race a big race we had in 1979. He was from Arizona at the time and racing all over the West. We saw him at Medford and all the big races before he moved up here. Uh, he was very successful racing uh, his super stocks and modified and uh, got a lot of experience. He's got a lot of stories to tell about his Arizona days. Mr. Buddy Murphy. Thank you very much. Uh, this was quite a surprise for me. I haven't been around in a long time. When I first come up here to race, I never was treated better by racers and by fans than anywhere I went in the country. And at that time, I was racing in all four corners of the United States. I broke the night I came up here, and a guy by the name of Jay Bugby stayed up all night and helped me fix my car so I could go to California for the next night to race. I got a chance to come up here to buy this racetrack, and every, three times I tried to buy this place, and it fell in, fell, just kept falling through. Never did, was able to succeed at it. But I like the people up here so much that we finally moved back, and I've been here ever since. And I really appreciate this, and I thank you very much. Well, uh, the next guy we're going to induct, we're going to go a little bit out of order because he's a busy guy also, if we could have him come this way. And that's uh, Brian Crockett. Now, he's over, he's down there. You want me to go to, oh, okay, he's coming up, okay. And I, I feel very honored to have a privilege to introduce this man and being inducted in the uh, Wall of Fame because uh, over the last uh, seven years, uh, I can say that this guy's been one of my best friends. And we've traveled through the country before uh, going to races. And uh, we've, we've even done some insane things like driving back uh, from the, the, the uh, trophy cup in Tulare, which is about 10, 12 hours from here, just straight through after the races and making it home. Uh, in the early hours of the morning, but I'm um, so just privileged to know this guy. Um, and what's special about him is he may not raced up here a lot in the Pacific Northwest, but uh, he's one of the most decorated drivers from the Golden State of California, but uh, something unique about him is he's not the first one to tell you that. He's, he's very humble, despite winning uh, right around 170 main event wins in his career. Uh, 10 track championships of Placerville, the North State uh, Challenge, which is now the Civil War Series in 1992. And uh, he managed this place from 2009 to 2011. And uh, you can put him up there next to Fred Brownfield as far as uh, promoting the sport, especially sprint car racing. So into the class of 2016 Wall of Fame, Brian Crockett. It's been a, been a privilege to work with everybody here. Place else I'd rather spend my Saturday nights. That's about all I got. And I parked it. <laughs> Brian Crockett, race fans. Yes, uh, I want to say, um, Brian, if you don't know, has been a tremendous mentor to the young sprint car drivers here. That their success reflects his. Uh, encouragement and coaching. Okay, now we got another California guy here. Uh, he moved up here in the early 80s, probably mid 80s. Uh, he had a road, a big uh, purple road runner. Harley Lewis. Thank you for all that. Uh, I'd like to thank my son-in-law and my son for helping all of you. Thanks a minute. 
Congratulations, Harley. So, Lester, let's have Lester come over here. Lester is one of our unsung heroes. He's a guy that uh, runs the races from the infield, and he's uh, lined up the cars after the caution flags, uh, tries to get everybody in order, and uh, gets people to have success in spite of themselves sometimes. So uh, he's been here for, I don't know if it's quite 30 years, but 20, 25 years. Uh, that kind of dedication is what makes this place one of the special places to race cars. Twenty-five years at this track is amazing. I've had lots of family race here back in the 60s, 70s, and the 80s. And now, today, you know, being one of the head, one of the head honchos out of three of us, Heather, Brian, and I, trying to run this place this year to keep the place open. The achievement on our behalf, and we all thank you fans for showing up. If it wasn't for you guys, we would not be here. And we were, we're trying to keep it open for next year, but we'll, we'll go through working the next three races. So, thank you. That's on the bottom of our hearts, guys. Uh, we just love the fans as much as we love the competition here. Okay, so Howard Dole family. Uh, Okay, um, Howard Dahl is one of our jalopy drivers. He raced here the very first year that the track raced. He raced here about four years. Um, the Lincoln Mercury dealer, and he, we got some great pictures of his old cars back on the display. Uh, Brad Dahl. Thanks a lot, Denny. Thanks to Ben and Denny and all those who've made this possible for everybody here. It's kind of amazing, 60 years ago today, about, I was sitting here watching the first cars go around this track with my dad and my brother. My sister was maybe here, but maybe about a year old then. But we want to thank all the fans for being here. If any of you were lucky enough to go to Lane Community College during the 70s, you had a great education from one of the top mechanics on the West Coast by the name of Howard Dull. He had the first diesel mechanics program on the West Coast. And he's on a lot of people that are still working today. I want to thank you all for being here. God bless you, and thank God for all the, so the soldiers and veterans. Have a good evening, and thanks to the fans. Okay, this guy's been racing out here since the mid '60s. Uh, ran uh, stock cars, jalopies, maybe. Modified, he's been a car owner, a pitman, he's got a whole slug of kids and stuff that race cars and grandkids, Kinzer, uh, Greg McDonald's, his son-in-law, uh, it's a complete racing family. Wendell Cooper. Chassis for my grandpa, my uncle. It's a, 
it's a family thing. I mean, a lot of my buddies are coming in here in a few minutes. And I said, one comes, all go, and they, they're standing back there scared. That's why they didn't raise up front sometimes. Anyway, no, it's a, it's a good thing. I have fun. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. He was such a pain when he was a kid. We had to handcuff him to the back of the truck one time, and uh, I don't think we could get away with that anymore. So the other partners in crime back then was uh, was Buck. He was building a street stock out at Earl's shop. 69 Grand Prix, fastest one ever. He went on to have a Camaro Superstock and went on to dominate at, uh, at Seaside at Clapsop County Speedway. He, uh, he learned to race here and went up there and kicked some butt. Uh, Alan Lau. Well, thank you. I just want to thank uh, uh, the Coopers, Alan and Earl, uh, my dad, for giving me a chance to race some more. And this man right here, Denny. Uh, it's all real, man. Good job. Thank you. Speedway's awesome here. Uh, thank you, everybody. I got to paint that car, and I was proud of that one. Yeah. Okay, the next guy is also from the, these guys are from the 14 pit crew. It's a new thing. We're inducting different pit crews. Dick Gritty, he's been a pitman on all kinds of cars. Now his, his grandson's five horse. in crime. They, they corrupted me somehow. Okay. As far as I know, this guy was the, the youngest major class track champion uh, for his time anyway, and that, that record lasted for a very long time. I think he won the modified uh, hardtop 67 and 68 championship here and 68 in Eugene. And uh, I'm not sure beyond that, but I know that Dan was a very popular young driver, being a high schooler out here running Modifieds. He had uh, done some go-kart driving before that, maybe. And uh, anyway, Dan Radonski. Thank you, thank you for, thank you for all of the people that supported me in the past, and, uh, and my wife, Cheryl. The sponsors that I had, the uh, some of those sponsors don't even exist anymore. That's 50 years ago, you know. And so the uh, the important thing is, is that uh, we had a great time running, and uh, we appreciate all of the support and all of the fan support. Thank you, Dan. Dan flew here from New Orleans uh, a few years back, I think, to see his mom get put in the Hall of Fame. So. Uh, that really meant a lot to us to see that kind of thing. And uh, so his, his brother, Kerry, I've already mentioned that he, he brought us all hand fans for the 90 degree weather. Can we hear it for Kerry? Uh, Kerry does special trophies for us every year here at Historical Night. We get old trophies and repurpose them. He makes beautiful plaques for us. He makes the trophies for the Dodge Trophy Shop, Trophy Dash. He's an old hog racer. Uh, his stepson is out here racing sportsmen, so we really, uh, Kerry makes a difference here. He's one of our big time guys that's behind the scenes. Let's hear it for Kerry Serhoff. 
book by uh, one of your brother Dan here tells me if, uh, if it wasn't for out uh, if it wasn't for uh, Cars Grove Speedway and my mom owning it back in the early '60s, uh, Dodge Trophy Shop wouldn't technically be here because uh, Dodge Trophy Shop was actually started here at the Speedway. Uh, for a lot of people that don't know that, and uh, just continue the legacy there. Thanks, Gary. Okay, our next guy. His, uh, his dad was a pitman out here and probably ran some pitman's races back in the, the jalopy days. Uh, he's been a long time sponsor of the drivers out here. Rick Zubich, Marvin Smith, um, Brendan Boyce. Uh, that's just a few of them. Anyway, he's been a long time supporter of the track, especially during our legal battles. Uh, Rick Boyce. Thank you. Quite an honor to be on that list with all these great people, except like Turn One Animals and them guys. I don't know about that, but uh, and I'd really like to thank you and your brother Kurt. Hope he's doing well for all you guys have done for this historical night. You've done it for years, and a special thanks to this young lady right here because she's keeping this place going along with her buddies Lester and Ryan. So uh, thank you very much. Let's keep it going. All right, great boys. All right, our last inductee this year is Heather Boyce. Uh, she's, she's done an awesome job of uh, running the Speedway. She uh, gave nightmares to one of our greatest opponents back in our legal battle days. She was there for every hearing, every meeting. Uh, she's done an outstanding job of running the track, and she's become a very credible and uh, top-notch promoter. Thanks, Denny. Um, I don't really know what to say. I don't feel like I've done nearly enough to be put in, especially with this group of people that's being put in here. Um, this place is home. It's where I grew up. It's what I love. And everybody here, from the drivers to the fans to the amazing people that I get to work with every weekend, they're my family. And there's nowhere else I'd rather spend every Saturday night and I hope we keep doing it forever. Thanks, Denny. Thank you, Heather. We've got a huge, wonderful racing family here. Uh, no matter what happens in the competition, uh, everybody cares about each other. And uh, I'd like to say a special uh, get well soon to my brother, Kurt. He's under the weather, and he's, he's done all this fantastic artwork and photography for us. There's a special picture that's going to be given with the 50-50 drawing winner. So uh, thanks for coming, everybody. Let's go racing.